This is a detailed video about how to calibrate the ABC suspension, active body control suspension on a Mercedes SL55. Now the information in this video is also going to be applicable to the Mercedes 500 SL, the R230, and possibly to some of the Mercedes with airmatic suspension. In this video, I'm going to go over what kind of diagnostic tool you can use to read the suspension settings on one of these cars, and what kind of diagnostic tool you need to actually be able to change the suspension settings because either you want to level your car, or in some cases you may want to lower the level of the car. Now originally it was my intention to do a video about how to lower the suspension on these cars because I've always thought that this car sits a little bit high and I know you can lower the suspension by one or two centimetres by logging into the appropriate module on this car if you've got the right diagnostic tool. Now unfortunately when I attempted to do that I ended up breaking the ABC suspension and ended up with an ABC warning light on the dash. Now I spent weeks trying to get rid of that ABC warning light, all sorts of different configurations and in that time I learned an awful lot about what the various modules do, what you need to set them to and how not to do things. I'm going to share some of that information with you which will hopefully avoid you breaking your ABC suspension and possibly even allowing you or enabling you to lower your car or level your car should you need to do so. Just a little bit of background on this car. A friend of mine bought this car from new. He paid about £100,000 for it when it first came out and I bought it from him at the beginning of 2022 for not too much money I thought at the time and the day after I bought the car I had an ABC visit workshop light to come on and it transpired that one of the plungers in the rear struts was faulty and I ended up replacing that and there's a whole video about that. Now the point of mentioning that is that to do to identify that fault I use this scanner here which is the iCarsoft version 2 scanner. This scanner here is not a lot of money I think it's about £130 and is excellent for being able to read all the modules in your car and tell you what the errors are. But what you can't do with a module in this price range is actually change any of the settings. Now, if you want to actually make changes to any of the modules in your system, you're gonna to have to spend a little bit more money than something like the Car iCarsoft. You can get onto eBay and buy a knockoff, Chinese knockoff of the Das Star system, or you can get along to a company like Autel and look at their Maxidas DS808, which does pretty much everything that Star does, not just for Mercedes, but you can use this on any other car as well. Just before we get started and plug a scanner in, I'm going to try and explain to you what some of the figures that you're gonna see in the diagnostic tool actually mean. You're gonna see plunger settings in millimeters, you're gonna see voltage readings in volts, and you're gonna be asked to put in angles and all this kind of stuff. And I'm gonna try and explain to you in simple terms what those figures are, what range they need to be in, and what happens when you change them. Now, there'll be lots of people that know how a standard suspension system works and possibly how the ABC active body control suspension system works. But for those of you who don't, I'm going to give you a very quick rundown using this little mock-up here of how the ABC system works and what's happening when you're actually changing the various settings on the diagnostic tool. Now most cars will have a suspension system something like this. You'll have a control arm here that's hinged at the top and that will be attached to the wheel and then you'll have a spring attached to the car and as the car goes over a bump the spring will absorb those bumps and running through the middle of the spring will be a shock absorber that damps down that spring motion. If you didn't have the shock absorber the car would carry on bouncing up and down. Now it's important to realise that on the ABC suspension you have a spring and a damper as well or a shock absorber but it's encapsulated within the actual strut and the difference is that the top of this strut here can have oil hydraulic oil pumped into it which effectively lowers the whole system like this and as you lower the whole system you'll see that the actual level from the wheel arch to the top of the wheel is increasing and you're increasing the height of the car. Now when you're driving along there's a very sophisticated computer system that pumps hydraulic fluid into the various um, struts on the car to keep your car level in corners and to keep the nose coming up and going down when you're accelerating etc. But when you're calibrating the height or when you're using the height 
button in your car, what you're effectively doing is you're moving this whole spring down like this. And when this gets to here, when we're in the diagnostic tool, you'll see that the plunger settings are measured in millimeters. And that naught millimeters is effectively when this gap here is at its greatest, like so. And the distance between here and the wheel arch is at its greatest. That's important to remember. Now, logged into the diagnostic tool, you'll see something called height settings. And attached to this control arm here is a little servo just like this. And when you move this servo up and down, it generates a voltage through this wire, tells the computer exactly what level this little unit here is at. So when you move the control arm down, this is moving down with it, etc. And those voltages have to be within a certain range when you come to calibrate your car. Now, herein lies the first unusual thing, okay? These little servos here do different things on different sides of the car. I want you to imagine that we're looking at the right-hand side of the car and the servo is in this position. When you take this and put it on the other side of the car, like so, that is actually now in the opposite position. So it's really important to realize that on one side of the car, when you're reducing these settings here, you're potentially reducing the height, but on the other side of the car, you've got to be increasing those settings to have the same effect. Now, an important thing to realize is, if we were sitting in this car now with the diagnostic tool plugged in, engine running, logged into the suspension control unit and looking at the voltages on those little height sensors, if I put a jack under this side of the car and jack the car up, the left-hand voltage readings for the front and back wheel would either be, would be going in one direction, and if I did that on the other side of the car, they'd be going on the other direction. So on one side of the car you need to raise the voltages and on the other side of the car you need to decrease the voltages to have the same effect. Now just before we move on from this model and get into the car I just want to mention that this little servo here has a rod connecting the servo to the control arm and you might be able to imagine that the longer that rod is the lower this car wheel will be or the greater the gap will be between the wheel and the wheel arch so for example if you reduced the length of that rod you would see that the car would be lowered and thus you can go out there and buy adjustable rods that effectively attach to that little servo and to the control arm and by um, reducing that height on one side sorry that length on one side of the car you'll see that you lower the car. And I think on the other side of the car, you're probably gonna to have to lengthen it to have the same effect. So I'm not actually gonna lower the car in this video using these rods. I'm gonna do a whole separate video on that at some stage. But the other thing that has a big bearing on the height of your car is the length of these rods. When you buy your car, they're fixed, but you can buy adjustable rods like this and I'll leave a link at the end of this video to where we got these, how much they cost and where you can get them fitted if you don't want to do the job yourself. Just very quickly going to point out on this front wheel of this car here, this is the control arm that goes up and down and this little rod at the back there is the rod that you can adjust the length of and you'll see the top of it is can attach to the control arm just with a bolt and the bottom of it is attached to that little electronic module which is basically a server with an arm that goes up and down which tells the computer the height of this particular side of the car. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video I actually managed to break the ABC system on this car and end up with an ABC warning light on the dash because I wasn't aware at the time that you cannot calibrate the plungers in your struts before you've actually calibrated the level on the car. You have to carry out a level calibration first and if that passes you can then go on to do the plunger calibration and then the load level calibration. If the level calibration on your car doesn't pass either because you've got a problem whereby the car's not level and the voltages aren't in the right range or you're trying to do it where the car isn't on level ground or there's some other problem if you press the button, the F3 key on your diagnostic system for the plunger calibration, you will get an ABC warning light on your dash and you're not going to be able to clear that light because once it's on, the module is locked. To start this process, it's important to make sure that your car is on level ground. So we've pulled this car back into the unit. This is the unit from where my red Mercedes was stolen from, actually. So this car is now on pretty much level ground. 
it's worth checking that the tyre pressures are all as they should be, that you haven't got one tyre flatter than the other. And last but not least, make sure the wheels are pointing forwards because as you move the steering wheel, that will change the height settings on the struts. For those of you who don't know or have not plugged in a diagnostic tool before, the um, cable plugs in just under here. This just clips open. So I've just switched on the Autel and then I've plugged it in and we're going to choose Bents. We're going to do automatic selection. This would automatically um, read the VIN number of our car. And that's okay. It's a 2004 car. Right hand drive. Yes, that's the car. We're going to do diagnosis. We're going to do, instead of scanning all the units, we're just interested with the. Um, the chassis and the suspension. If you want to calibrate the um, plungers in your struts or change the height of the vehicle, you're going to go into special functions. But on this particular unit here, if you touch active test, this is the section you'd go into if you wanted to do the rodeo on your car. There is there in the bottom left hand corner, for example, if you wanted to warm up the ABC fluid prior to um, changing it. So we're just going to go into special functions and then this is the place where most people make mistakes because if you go into control module adaptations here you'll see the calibration plunger travel sensors level calibration load adjustment and you'll think brilliant I'm in the right section but if you make changes in that section there you'll find that when you turn the car off and then the next time you turn the car on again, none of those changes will be saved. So if you want to actually have the changes saved because you want to change the height of your car, you need to do it via the initial startup. Then you want to go to that option there. And you'll see the same um, options, the plunger sensor, travels level calibration and load adjustment. So on this car, we're going to start off by calibrating the plunger travel sensors. We have actually um, replaced one of the sensors, one of the rear plungers, um, when we first got this car, so it's probably a good time to actually calibrate it. We never did that after we changed it. Everything seemed to work fine. And this is going to give us the reading um, in millimetres of where the plungers are at the moment and also the um, pressure of the pump so between 180 and 190 is good we're just going to press ok and if you don't do this test in a certain way, you're going to get this error message here. The preconditions for system test were not met. Check preconditions and repeat system test. And then you're going to get this ABC visit workshop warning. Now, if you want to calibrate your levels, and these are all within spec here, you should, in theory, just be able to hit the next button and add some angles, which hopefully you've measured with a Romis gauge or an inkling. Ink Inclinometer <laughs> meter, can't pronounce that. And here you put minus for an, this is for an SL55, minus 8.0, and here the rear ones you put minus 2.0 and minus 2.0, and then you hit the OK button. And then you hit the start button. I'm going to do a spoiler alert and tell you that the Maxidas DS808 diagnostic tool is brilliant for logging into the system and allowing you to do things like rodeo and all that kind of good stuff. However, when I did a level calibration or try to do a level calibration on this device with all the right settings in the car, it would fail every time. 
and I could not clear the ABC Warn Visit Workshop light on the dash. I had to take this to a independent Mercedes place in Bristol. They put this their star system on this, used exactly the same settings as I had been using, and the calibration worked perfectly well. Now we are down at BG Griffiths in Bristol. They are one of the leading independent Mercedes specialists, and it's going to be considerably cheaper getting them to sort out that ABC fault than it is taking the car to Mercedes. What these guys are doing is they're using top of the range state-of-the-art wireless system here, wondering where the wires for the car are, but there aren't any, um, and they're just doing a full scan to see what the car throws up. Obviously, this is throwing an ABC Visit Workshop code there. Obviously, when you fit a new module, you're supposed yeah. to copy the old stuff off the old module yeah. and transfer on, but obviously, you don't know what settings are. So does it matter what order you do that in? Because I understood that you have to do the level calibration before you can do plunger calibration or load calibration on the one yeah. you accept it. Obviously, you've only got a code for the level calibration on it. Yeah. figures all look kind of inspect to me. Yeah, yeah. You ain't gonna get them exactly. No. It also should be minus eight point three and minus seven. So we're doing minus seven. I did minus eight and minus two and yeah. Might, yeah. That's what I kind of read but you know what the internet's like, isn't it? Yeah. I don't know if it made a difference whether you did minus eight point naught or minus eight, whether it's expecting a point naught or not. Yeah. So I'm intrigued to know what this throws up because when I do this and um, it says you know they're out of range, do it again. So level calibration successful. I mean, the only thing that's different, apart from the machine, obviously, is um, maybe your ground is more level. Possibly. Possibly. So to get rid of that load um, code, you do, you do actually need to do a load calibration with no one in the car, nothing in the car. Every time I've done the plunger calibration, that seems to work absolutely fine. What does the load measure? When you see the load settings, you see minus six mil, minus six mil, minus four mil, minus four mil, whatever. I'm not too sure. No, honest, no. <laughs> you don't really do many of these. They're getting quite old now. Yeah. They're 17 years old, this one is. So have you done the um, plunger calibration, then you're going back again to do the height? Yeah, I've done it That's what ten thousand pounds buys you. Yeah, <laughs> a lot. Okay, so when the calibration and everything, the height calibration and everything has been successful, you log into those. Those are all the figures are the same. Every time I've logged in and it hasn't been successful, those figures are all different. So are they? Interesting. super busy but they're also super nice and having fixed the error code we are going to well they're going to let me plug my system in here and see basically if I now try and do a height calibration whether it works in which case 
The only thing I was doing wrong before was not having it on level ground. And if it doesn't do it, obviously they're gonna roll their eyes and think we've got much better things to be doing than messing about with your SL55. But um, let's just turn this car on. Okay, so I'm just automatically reading the VIN code. It's a 2004 right and drive. Yes, that's the model. Diagnostics. Um, control units, chassis, suspension. Special functions. Going to initial startup. I'm gonna go initial startup with manual settings for new control unit. And we're going to do level calibration. You have to do that first. You raise and lower suspension struts at low speed. This hasn't got anything to do with the speed that you're driving. It's got to do with how fast the car goes up and down when you're actually pressing the F keys. Okay, so we're going to press the next and see what happens. There's no faults on this car at the moment. And we're going to put in minus eight and minus eight. Minus eight and minus eight. We're going to put in minus two and minus two. And then we're going to go okay. And then we're going to go start. So every time I've tried to do this, I get that error there. So spoiler alert, it may be that my software on here is just out of date. I'd be really interested to know either if anybody else has got the same unit, the Maxidas DS808, and they've successfully carried out a level calibration on their SL. Um, and if so, maybe I could borrow the machine and see if it works and it's just a problem with my machine. or if they've had exactly the same problem. So if you have got one of these systems and you have got an R230, please drop me a comment and let me know if you've ever successfully calibrated the suspension using this unit.